My name is Sarah Bowen. I'm the artist behind Tiny Things by Bowen, and I'm really excited that you're here today for the Stop Motion 101 class. I've used stop motion in a lot of different ways, whether it's with raw clay that is still flexible, or with finished items, so things that don't really have any flex left that are still made of clay, um, or just everyday objects can be really fun to work with. I'm going to show you a few little clips and give you some ideas on what you could do with stop motion. So for today's class, the only materials that you have to have are something to take a picture with, so whether that is a phone or a digital camera, um, whatever works for you. If it is a phone, I like to have mine plugged in. It's plugged into the charger. It would be terrible if we got partway through and the phone died and we had to move it to plug it in. Keeping things stationary is a really important aspect of stop motion. If you have a tripod around your house, that's just a little thing that you hook your phone into that lets you point it in different directions and keep it really still. You can use that. Um, it's a really good tool for stop motion, but you don't have to have this. Um, so I'm going to show you how to use some everyday objects, even furniture, books, whatever you need to, to keep your camera still while you work. And then depending on what objects you choose to give it a try with, you might want a nice hard surface. So for me, I'm going to play around with this die and this soft table kind of moves. The tablecloth itself moves when I roll the die around. So I want a surface that's not going to show movement as we work. So maybe that's working on the tile floor or the hardwood floor or a table. Just get yourself some nice hard surface. I'll be using this ceramic tile. I'm going to show you how to do actual claymation with movement in the clay, and then how to do regular old everyday objects. And lastly, I'll be showing you how to do stop motion with 2D art. So I will be making an animation as I draw. So whatever you decide to do, um, I hope that you have a lot of fun with it. I have made myself a little tripod out of a box. You could use just about anything. I've used stacks of books before. I've used a shelf of a bookcase and then worked below it. Whatever works for you. I can see this box in frame on my camera, but that's okay because we can crop the final product. So don't worry about if you have some space that you don't want to be able to see in your photo. We'll edit that later and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to be doing this first one with some modeling clay. Modeling clay is meant for claymation. Um, it's really nice and soft and wiggly. If you're trying to use something more like polymer clay, um, you might come across it cracking if it's not warmed up enough. So if you are trying polymer clay, that's fine. I've done it with that before, but make sure you've conditioned it and softened it really well and then work fairly quickly because eventually it will harden and shape and then when you go to move the fingers you might crack them. So I have my little modeling clay hand that I sculpted and then I have just a little d20 die. And I'm going to make a little animation that looks like that hand is rolling the die. I also have a little bit of extra clay here that I've set aside that I'm going to use kind of like sticky tack to hold the die how I want it as it rolls, because we don't necessarily want it to just roll from flat side to flat side um, because that's not natural. Um, it does kind of touch its little corners as it rolls. So I know that I would like it to end on the 20, because we all know rolling a 20 is the best thing to do. So I'm kind of going to go backwards here. Let's see, I'll have it roll off the fingers just so that I get an idea of where it should start. So I'm going to have it start there and I'm going to fold my fingers up around it so that they're holding on to it. Put my thumb on there. So this is kind of how I'm going to want to start. If you're using a phone, this part's important. 
If you're using a phone that has service, turn it on airplane mode so that you're not halfway through and then you get a call and it vibrates off of whatever platform you have it on. Just turn everything off, that way you can work and know that your phone isn't gonna move without you know, your knowledge. So to begin, I have my little die in my hand and I think I'm going to kind of smoosh the clay up like that so that it looks like it's about to throw the die. Uh, working with clay is really nice because it is kind of its own sticky tack. So my first shot, this is gonna be my first shot. Be careful when you're touching. You don't have a tripod, just one light little tap. They make um, Bluetooth shutter clickers for your phone. If you bought a tripod, it might've come with that. That's a really good tool for stop motion, but you don't have to have it. So for our first movement, I'm gonna make sure that I don't pick it up and move it. I want it to stay on the surface so that it has as controlled of movement as it can. So I'm gonna kind of hold it down a little bit move it just a bit so it's starting to come this way also make sure here i'm going to snap my next photo make sure that you're not making a shadow in your frame because sometimes you'll move it and then forget to get all the way out of the way and that shadow will really stand out in the stop motion so let's see looks like it started to move a little on its own if you're ever unsure, you can go back and look at your last frame. So it kind of did start to droop a little bit, so I'll let it go just a little further. Take another shot. Now I'm going to start to angle it like this and move the fingers as it is getting ready to let go of the die. So I'm going to pull the fingers away a little bit. I'm holding that die to make sure it doesn't get away. And grab a shot, move it up a little further, open my fingers a little further. This clay is very soft, so where the die has been, there's going to be a little indentation, and we can kind of smooth that as we go. I did move the die a little bit, so it's starting to come roll off of the fingers there. I'm going to scooch it a little more, get my thumb out of the way. I'm never picking it all the way up off the table as I work. It's going to start to roll off. I'm going to smooth out. Oop, picked it up a little bit. You might be able to see that in the final product. Sometimes you just don't know until it's done. Take another photo. All right, it's about to leave the hand entirely. So I want my hand to be pretty flat. Oh no. All right, I'm just gonna pick it up, set it right back where it was. Again, if you need to go glance back at that last one, so I'm glad I did that because I moved it. All right, I'm gonna make it look closer to where we were. There we go. And you can tell mine's not gonna be perfect. This is just kind of for practice, for fun. Yours isn't gonna be perfect at first either. Just kind of keep going with it. If you make a little mistake, don't give up and start over. The first couple of times, try it a couple of times. Please excuse the jet going by overhead. All right, it's gonna to start to come off of the hand and now we need it to sit on the ground in just this way. Smooth this part of his hand out a little more. A shot. I'm gonna roll it a little bit more. Also, make sure that you wait for your camera to refocus because sometimes if you're moving your hand up here and it's a newer iPhone, it'll focus in up top. And when you move your hand out again, it'll focus the way you want it to. So now that the die is all the way out of my hand, I'm gonna start curling my hand back in and the die is going to move forward a little bit it's still on that little piece of clay that i've kind of smooshed it down on you can use sticky tack as well i'm going to flatten it out it's almost perfectly on the 20. i'm going to curl my fingers in a little more 
grab a shot. And actually in that shot, I can see that I can just barely see that clay that is holding it on. So I'm gonna go back, delete that one. Come back in here, hold on to my die, make sure it stays in the right spot and just kind of come and use my fingernail to pull that extra clay out of there so we can't see it in the picture. There we go, I'm happier with that. And then that completes the dies movement. It's landed on 20. I like it. I think just to finish it up, let me make sure I got that 20 shot. Yep, okay. Just to finish it up, I think I'm gonna move my hand. into a thumbs up because it is happy that it rolled a 20. So remember, just do little movements. If you're wondering, should it be more or less? It should probably be less. It took me five frames to fully curl my hand up and get that completed. Thumbs up. So from here, I am going to show you through the screen on my phone what it looks like to put them all together as one little stop motion animation. Hey, so we're back a day and one haircut later to show you how to edit the photos into the actual animation once you have them all done. I'm using an iPhone um, and I'm using the app called Image Play. It's spelled I-M-G-P-L-A-Y, but it's just a free stop animation app. So if there is, if that one doesn't work for maybe your Android or maybe you need to find an application for a desktop computer, they're all going to have basically the same functions. So I'm going to show you how I do it in this app, even if your app looks a little bit different. So when you open it up, it does allow you to use videos as well. So make sure that you're in the photos section here. Go back to our hand. So this is the beginning for me. I did actually do a little test run prior to recording with you all. So that's what those those earlier photos are. But this is where our animation begins and we're just going to go in and select all of those frames and say make. It's going to pull it over into the app. The first thing you want to play around with is the speed. The higher the speed, the smoother the motion, but sometimes it can be too high. So just kind of play with it. Um, it's definitely just like inching forwards on the setting that it starts out on. So I'm going to Go a little faster, see what I think. I think this could stand to be a lot faster actually. Now this is frames per second. So that means that there are, you know, there's one frame per every 0.07 seconds. I'm, I like this, I think it might be a little bit fast. I'm gonna take it back down a little bit. That's pretty good. Maybe like a little in between. We'll go with eight. Yeah, so I like that. But one thing that I like to do at the end of my stop motions is to have a little pause before it wraps around. Because if we make a GIF out of this or a repeating video, it's just gonna go back to the beginning and go over and over again. And I think I want a little bit of a pause on the thumbs up. So somewhere in your app, there is probably the ability to adjust the order and the number of your frames. So I'm going to go, to, these are the frames that are already included. I'm going to open that up, copy it so that it makes another one. So that's now going to be twice as long of a frame, but it's still pretty fast. You know, we put all of those in there in 0.08 seconds. So I'm going to copy it again and then just hop out there and see what it looks like. So you can see we have these two extra ones at the bottom. And you can see it just pauses for a little while. I think I want it to pause about twice as long. So I'm gonna go in, copy it two more times. See what we think about that. Ooh, I like that. We could maybe stand, maybe we could add one more in, but I think that's pretty close to perfect. And I just want to show you that sometimes it takes some trial and error. Just kind of play with it. There's no reason why you shouldn't take this time to experiment before you save the file. So here's what I've got. I like it a lot, uh, but I want to crop it. Remember I promised that you could set your phone up and still see what was, seated, 
what it was sitting on and then crop it out. So we're going to go in. This app has it within the app. I'm going to tell it I want it to be a square and zoom in just the way you like it. I'm going to flip it kind of decide where I think that's pretty great. Maybe zoom in a little more. So if you're using a free app, there is very likely going to be a watermark in the bottom corner of it. You can pay to get rid of it. It's usually a pretty small fee. You pay it once and then you can use the app forever without having that watermark. Or maybe you just don't crop it quite so small. Let the watermark be there and then go into the phone later and crop it in even smaller to get rid of the watermark. It's up to you. Um, but I'm going to leave it right there. Save it. If you wanted to add text, that is a function of this app as well. You can do filters. Um, they have, you know, all kinds of things that you can add in there. There's also some audio, like stock sounds that you can play with and add in there. But I'm going to save this one as is. It's going to get it ready and then it's going to offer, once I say save to photos, you can save it as a GIF or a video. And then I always do highest quality because even though maybe we spent half an hour taking all those little pictures, this is like a one second clip. It's very quick. So it's going to be small. Don't worry about it taking up too much room on your phone. So high quality. And then you decide if you set it to only go five times, it will eventually stop on the final frame. I'm just going to have mine loop forever and I'm going to save it. And then you can go back and see it in your photo stream. There we go. And you can see what I mean about the little watermark down there on the bottom. If you have a newer iPhone, you can crop videos just within this function. You can click the edit button. But I think that turned out pretty good. Thumbs up. Okay, so for our next one, I'm happy with how my camera is set up. I'm not going to move it around. Um, you can play around with all kinds of different shots and angles. You can use things like I actually use a little piece of clay to smoosh this down to the box so I know it, it wouldn't move. But you can also put things in between the camera and the box so that it has a bit of an angle on it. Play around with what you like and just remember you can crop later. So for this one, I'm going to show you how to combine 2D art with stop motion. So I have this little snail that I made out of polymer clay. He's got a little bit of wiggle in his eye stocks, but it's not going to be claymation necessarily because he won't be wiggling. Um, he'll just be moving. So whenever you're doing stop motion, think about how a thing actually moves. For example, snails don't really walk like this. Like when we think of a person or an animal, they walk going back and forth like this. But a snail just kind of moves along. Maybe he'll meander a little bit, but basically we're going for something like this. And the way that I'll be adding 2D art is that I'm going to be drawing along as I go. So think about, take a look at your screen, think about where you're going to crop it. For me, I'd like this to be like a 16 by 9, that's a standard Instagram um, screen size. So maybe for a reel uh, or Instagram TV, if you would like to do that vertical, then just think, okay, this is my space. You're not going to see anything beyond this. So that's where I'm going to focus all of my efforts. And I think I'd like to have my snail maybe start on the boundary where he just kind of makes his way into the frame. So I'll take my first photo and I'm just going to scooch him forward a little bit. Take another photo. Take your time with this. He's just going to keep moving. He's moving straight forward. If you are doing multiple items, this part is really important. If, say, the snail is making its way to a flower that's turning or something like that, then you need to do those items in the same order every time. So say I move my snail, then I move the flower, then I move the snail, then I move the flower. That way you don't get part of the way done and think, oh, I don't remember which thing I moved. So I've just scooted this snail far enough that in my frame I can see a little bit of paper behind him. So I'm going to color right there. 
like that. It's going to be barely visible in the frame, but we're going to work through it. I'm going to scooch him up a little further. Color in behind him. I want to have his tail so that he's just touching that color. And I'm going to lift him up a little bit. If you ever do need to lift it up off the table, try to have like a little pivot point. I'm lifting it up and keeping his little face touching. That way you know you're not moving it around. So I'll take the photo, scooch him up, and maybe you have an idea of what I'm doing since you saw all of my colors here. I'm actually going to have this snail making a little rainbow trail across the page. So I've got some orange in there now. So I'll scooch him forward. I'm going to do a little bit more orange. So this is, you could do stop motion with just a drawing. You could show your step-by-step -step of how you've drawn something by just taking a picture every time you have made progress. And keep an eye out. I just blew off some little crumblies from my colored pencil. Um, keep an eye on your surface to make sure that you don't get random items on there, like maybe a little piece of fuzz or lint made its way onto the space and you don't notice it till later, that can be really annoying. So scooch it up a little bit more. Start to add green. Like that. Maybe as I move, I'll start to angle him ever so slightly that way. Being careful not to lift it too far up and lose my space. So he's starting to go off to the left a little bit. Got a little bit of blue in there now. I'm gonna go a little further. Remember, move your hands out of the way. You can see the pretty distinct shadow that he's giving off here. If your hand was in the way, your hand would give off a very distinct shadow as well. Because I'm working on this piece of paper, there's also the danger of me moving my entire workspace. Um, if you're going to do something like this where you're using a piece of paper, maybe tape it down would have been a wise choice for me to do, and I didn't do that. So he's going to move up a little more. I've moved on to a purple. A little bit further, I'm trying to be consistent in, in how many frames I do of each color. Like so now I'm going to go ahead and finish it. I'll have him meander off the page. I'm going to speed it up um, so that you don't have to sit through the entire process and I'll meet you on the other end when we start to edit. our little snail, we're going to follow the same processes as we did for the hand. We're going to open up the app, go to the photos, select all of our frames, but you'll notice this one has a lot of frames. Let's see, there's actually 70. So 70 little pictures. I'm going to take another second to load in. 
And I think that in this one, we're going to be able to kind of point out some little mistakes that are easy to make as we go and as we see them flipping through here. It does take a minute when you have that many photos. One thing, if you're taking a ton of photos for stop motion and you're making these videos, I encourage you to go back and delete the photos when you're done making the stop motion or saving them elsewhere because whew, it can take up a lot of space on your phone. All right, so here's what it starts out as. He's just barely inching. Let's speed him up. I'm gonna double down the speed here. Still pretty small. Oh, I saw my surface move. Remember how I said it would have been wise for me to tape down that paper somehow? We can see movement in it in between frames sometimes. And you can also tell that my lighting is changing ever so slightly, and that is because my windows are open. Um, so if I had been in a little bit more control of my light so the cloud cover wasn't making a difference, you wouldn't be able to see it. Um, but it's not, you know, maybe you wouldn't notice unless I pointed it out. So still maybe a little bit slow and jerky. I'm gonna go, let's go with that. Ooh, that's a little quick. Maybe I'm gonna go back down to 10. See where that gets me. I think I like that. See, you do notice that kind of dramatic movement there in the beginning where it shifted, but you just noticed it that one time. So I like the speed. I don't necessarily care about having a pause on the end um, like we did on the other one where we added frames. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go in and crop. I want it to be up and down, like we talked about it being for Instagram. And that is nine and 16 are the ratios for that. Nine by 16 is the ratio of your screen on Instagram. And just frame your snail the way you want. If you notice, you can see on this one, just the tiniest sliver of my desk at the bottom. So I'll scooch it down. Now I can see it at the top. So I'm gonna actually have to zoom in a little. That's pretty good. Let's so we'll see how much I can scooch over. Go like that. So that is just, that just has my background in frame. There's nothing else outside of it. I like it. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to go ahead and save it. I'm going to, again, let it be looped forever, high quality. It doesn't super matter um, if you save it as a video or a GIF. A GIF you can use a little bit more freely online. Um, you can like copy and paste it in a way that you can't a video. A video has to have, like it has to be uploaded somewhere specifically to be linking to and from. So depending on what you do, save it however you wanna save it. Um, and now you have a really cool stop motion to play with. So whatever you make, I think it would be really cool to share it to your library's Facebook page. Um, I'll definitely be going around through there and seeing if anybody puts up anything cool. And I hope that you can use this for some project or just for fun in the future. I think it's, it's like a hobby, essentially. Why not make some little stop animation? And if you really love it and you want to start delving further into it, I highly suggest checking out um, Wes Anderson and Tim Burton movies that use a lot of that stop animation and look at some of their behind the scenes just to see what it looks like on a huge movie production scale because it certainly doesn't look like sitting on a box in our living room but um you know maybe that's something to work towards but anyway thank you so much for hanging out and learning a little bit about stop animation i hope you make something cool and i hope to see you next time bye